Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to take advantage of today also, and this is going to be another one of those continuous shot videos. I'll kind of pause it here and there, but it's going to be one clip that I upload. Uh, but what we're going to do today is I'm just going to take you around with me on my Sunday here, and I will just show you what I'm doing. It's raining. That's too bad, but you know, life doesn't wait. So we're going to get out there and get busy. I have a few topics we're going to go uh, talk about and we'll go do. So let's get to it. Okay, so first off, um, we're just out here at the pond and I want to make a point about making a critical observation right now in the season. It's really important as things are dying up that you go and you investigate which plants are still green and performing photosynthesis. And you always want to have some. So you see different patches of flowers and stuff that I've planted all around this um, pond area and you can see that having the diversity of plants planted everywhere gives you the ability to have things that are still performing photosynthesis and we'll talk about um, why that's important you know for example here's like a little guild with um, I believe that's a bark nut tree and uh, pawpaw here and we've got some sumac and uh, lilacs and hascaps and a whole bunch of stuff in here. Um, this green plant here is wild sweet william and this is actually and that's comfrey there as well and it's really important to notice that you know which things in here are still performing photosynthesis because you have to remember that as I said um, in many of my videos that the soil life needs to always eat and it's plants through their root exudates that are constantly feeding the soil life. And you can see in this wild flower hill, all the green that's going on in here as there's little baby birds actually. Can you see them? Picking at probably worms that are coming up, feasting. Can you see those? That's so cool. You can see I've winterized the pond. Uh, I kind of showed that in my previous video but you can see um, little patches of yarrow for example that are still green still performing photosynthesis you can see the lavender back there that's still performing photosynthesis um, we've got sweet flag and iris in the pond that are still doing that it's so important to notice which plants are doing that and we're going to go also uh, collect some leaf bags today and we're going to drive by some monoculture, uh, corn, soy, fallow, uh, you know, three rotation cash crop fields. And we'll show you what typical industrial farming looks like. And when you watch some of my videos like this will change how you garden forever. Um, or the soil science video, you'll, you kind of understand that plants Plants are the constant energy source that's feeding energy into the soil food web of life. There's this complex web of life that is supported by plants under the ground. And we have this giant ball of fire that's supporting and providing all this energy to the world. And underground, they don't have access to that energy source. So in order for there to be life under the ground, there needs to be energy coming in under the ground. That's just basic thermodynamics. It's basic physics. You need to have energy in order to support anything, life or anything. So because the sun can't get under the ground, the only way to have life under the ground is to have plants under the ground. And it's a photosynthesis that's driving that energy down into the roots. You know, you got CO2 plus water uh, gives oxygen plus sugars. A lot of those sugars are not stored in the trunk of the plant. They're put down into the soil via the root exudates. So the plants are critical. Plants being green now in the season are super critical because if you're like a little soil microbiology that's living in this um, soil, then you need food always. You can't just have food during the growing season and then you know, we clean our garden beds out and they're just dirt and we put them to bed over the winter time. What do you think happens to the soil food web of life when we do that? It collapses. So 
What's really important is that you are constantly looking to add in long living plants into your gardens so that they're green at this time of year and they're still feeding that critical soil biology that you depend on. So let's head off and we will go collect some leaf bags, hook the trailer up and we will talk about and show you some fields and how they're really minimizing the ability of their cells to grow food and cycle nutrients because they're basically just bare right now. And what I wanted to show you right now before we get going is I want to show you what my gardens look like in the fall and winter. I guess it depends on when, when you're growing, but for us it's around October or so. You want to be sowing in new plants that will really stay green and live for a long time. So we've got the sorrel, we've got strawberries all in here, and we sow in um, kale. This is red Russian kale. And this will actually stay green performing photosynthesis right through the entire winter. Like I have come out here in March and there's two feet of snow and the kale is popped up above some of the snow and it's still performing some photosynthesis, driving energy down to feed the soil life in my gardens. And this is what your gardens should look like. If you can, this is what they should look like in the winter time. So you can sow in stuff like a, a winter field mix it'll be like cow pea vetch um, any kind of uh, late living crop the brassicas are really good at living in the winter time but anything that's providing photosynthesis for the soil life is really really good to have and i've really enjoyed this sorrel i've loved having it um, in my salads it's got this nice lemony flavor and this i love because it is still green and it's still feeding the soil food web of life. So that is just so, so important. And I know that it spreads everywhere, but consider putting in mints and bee balms and lemon balms and things in the mint family in, as well as garlic. Garlic is a great plant for putting in some uh, late season photosynthesis into your gardens. I know that this mint will spread everywhere, but I can just cut it and uh, sow into it like a succession sowing then I can harvest that as you know a yield but uh, I know maybe some people will say don't put mint in and around your gardens it'll spread everywhere but um, I'm kind of okay with that and here is some I had a brain fart I had to think this is a good King Henry so this is another edible green and we planted it here it's a perennial this goes great in salads and it is still green putting out photosynthesis. So a wonderful, wonderful um, addition to your gardens. Consider sowing that um, and it also late season is providing photosynthesis even if you're not eating it. And it's still delicious. All right, so we got the trailer all hooked up. And we are gonna get our root buster shovel. So I love this thing. This is the best shovel. It's got a sharpened edge and then serrated for busting through roots. So this is great for digging up trees, which is something else we're gonna do. Hi. Okay, so we're at my local municipal chip, uh, community, free community chip uh, pile. And um, this is one of the spots where I have been doing lots of gorilla planting. A lot of this area around here is fairly marginalized and definitely not being used. And I've planted lots of seedlings. You can see a bunch of them coming up here. So we're going to kind of go around and thin some of those out, harvest, take some of the little baby saplings that are coming up and spread them in old man walking trail. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. So you can see some of the edge of this property, you know, it's just almost like a dump where they'll take old tires and just kind of dump them and store them. And it goes back quite a ways for just landfill. And uh, a lot of these areas, they're not used whatsoever for anything. So I've been popping back in there, planting oaks, chestnuts, and maples, um, and different fruit trees back in there. And unfortunately, a lot of them have dropped their leaves now. Um, and it's kind of tick season, so I don't want to go too far into there. Um, but what is this? 
but I'm gonna go harvest some of them. Look at this, someone dumped some apples here. That's a kind of bit of a, a happy little happening there. It's too bad they weren't further in. Someone just dumped them to get rid of them, but it would have been nice if someone dumped them further in where they might get a chance to turn into apple trees. So, oh, like, let's just, let's just help that process out. Yeah, maybe it's good that I played ball growing up. So, I don't know how many of these we'll take. But uh, we'll just keep doing some of that. So you can see here, here's some black locusts that I planted. And I basically just spread the seed. Collected them from black locusts near the highway. And I figured this is a pioneering area. Lots of soil disturbance and nitrogen fixers will do really well. So I thought I'd get a high germination out of the black locust. Now what I didn't think is that they'd happen so quick. You have to kind of boil black locust seed or else they can take 10 years to cold stratify. But look at this, this is I think three years later and they finally germinated here on the side of the hill. So we're actually gonna dig some of these up and see if we can um, take some of these seedlings home. It's gonna be really hard for me to do one-handed here. I don't know how much I'll be able to show you guys here, but I'm hoping that we can kind of pull this, some of these bigger ones out and I wonder if they'll have nitrogen nodules that I can show you. So these are Pioneer nitrogen fixers. Oh yeah. There, do you see some of those nitrogen nodules right here? So those are the clusters of um, nitrifying bacteria and when we cut the plant these will get shed and released into the soil or at least it's commonly believed there is there are some people who think that that's not exactly what the mechanism is but anyways we'll collect a few more of these and we'll plant these back in our old man walking trail just tiny little saplings like this then we'll get some um, black locust uh, this is a great plant for nitrogen fixer. Uh, it is a great uh, fuel source, actually. It's got very, very dense firewood. So it's actually so dense that it uh, will kind of dull your chainsaws very quickly. Um, and it's got tremendous fungal resistance. So it's kind of like cedar, and it makes fantastic posts for fences. And it also uh, has an edible flower that you can turn into like fritters. It's great food for bees and birds. I mean, and it fixes nitrogen. What is not to love about black locust? Well, I guess maybe the thorns. So phone died. Uh, we did get a couple trees. We're gonna go off to the next place. Bit of a strange way to spend your, uh, your Sunday. I know, I had three hockey practices today, but I do have about an hour and a half maybe two hours in between everything. So I'm rushing out, getting some leaf bags. So let's get going, because we've got to get this all done. So it's pretty crazy. It's four o'clock right now, and it's already getting dark. I don't know how much of this I'll be able to show you guys, but. Okay, I should probably show this also. Um, so we're grabbing leaf bags right now, and this is kind of the thing you want to see. Super full bags, lots of bags. And what I do actually is I look inside the bags and see what kind of leaves are in there. And we are going to be looking for two things, shredded leaves, full bags, and types of leaves that we want. So we're looking like oaks and maples and stuff. So we're looking for like nice maple leaves. Um, we don't want to see um, and nice kind of small leaves, ideally shredded, but we'll take some of these. And I know it's a little weird. We are at someone's end of their driveway going through their leaf bags, but most people actually like that you're grabbing their leaves. So let's quickly go put those in the truck. So this is an area that I know because I've come here um, multiple times and there's lots of people who shred their leaves here. So well, when you see that, take note of it and um, collect, uh, collect from the same spots where you know have 
you know, really good trees, oaks and maples. Um, things with small leaves like black locust is great as well if you can find that. Um, but uh, you really want people who shred their leaves and you want to be careful people, especially in the summertime, look at how their lawns look. So um, this guy here, for example, um, has a very wild lawn in the summertime he looks like he just mowed but i know that this guy doesn't spray chemicals i also has been talking to this guy before as well and he's got a huge maple here that drops lots of leaves down and he often shreds his leaves so um, he is a spot where i've just happened to remember over the years has tons and tons of leaves doesn't put any chemicals on his lawn so i'm not worried about any herbicides making it into my gardens from here i've talked to the guy um, and uh, we actually started talking because I was grabbing his leaves off his lawn and he thought that that was bizarre and we got talking and then he you know kind of became a semi friend so it's kind of weird how you meet people and you think it's weird that you're grabbing people's leaves off their driveway but uh, sometimes they think it's kind of neat and uh, actually the guy here uh, said he was gonna start a garden in his backyard and he talked my ear off for about 30 minutes about gardening so it was kind of nice little relationships that are built off of weird things like going around at the end of their driveway grabbing their leaf bags. But those are the things you're looking for, for sure. So this here is also what you want to see. You want to see tons and tons of bags. You want to see very large trees um, that are defoliated. So very large trees, small area, tons and tons of bags. There's very low chance of there being random garbage and surprises in here it's just all leaves now these aren't shredded but these are maple so that's totally awesome we'll take those so we call that the this is the jackpot right there and right here so these are huge bat huge stacks of leaves and they're all very full and full of maple leaves so i know what i'm getting and this is what you're looking for right here. Okay, now this right here is one of the first spots that I did gorilla planting. And this is a spot in between two houses and it was just a vacant lot um, that had been left alone for a very long time. So I figured I would come in and try to reforest part of it and plant things in there. And you can see what happened. And this is kind of frustrating and this is why I brought my shovel, is that it looks like someone bought the lot and has finally decided to develop it. So they came in and they've cleared out all of these little baby trees. There's tons of little baby sapling oaks, uh, maples, and lots of birches in here actually. And you can see that they've just come in and cut them all out and then laid them down and this is just so i mean it's their land obviously <laughs> they can do what they want with it um but this is this is annoying this is so annoying because had i known i would have come in here and taken some of these saplings out so what we're going to do is pop into the edges here where i know i've planted some um, birch and we're going to go and collect some of these saplings before they get completely cleared out and this whole entire lot gets cleared out so we're gonna go grab some of those and I'm rapidly losing sun. So, I'm, and my phone is at 2%. So we're gonna go put it away and we're just gonna go get this done because I wanna get as many of these as possible before I lose the time. So let's get to it. Yeah, so we got about 20 saplings or so. Just quickly dug them out of one general cluster. It's good enough for now. Um, stuck my phone in this uh, I got this cool little case to hold my phone here so just if you're wondering I'm not actually holding my phone now when I'm driving and I wanted to pop over really quick to discuss the industrial farming um, and the maximizing the amount of time that you've got living plants in the soil so we're gonna quickly go over and hopefully we have enough sunlight and then I'm off to another hockey game so let's get there now hopefully this isn't too dark and you guys can see, um, but this is what modern industrial agriculture kind of looks like. And if you are soil microbiology living in this soil, now what are you eating right now? You're not eating a whole lot because there's not a whole lot of photosynthesis going on. And in terms of energy getting into the soil, the sunlight's not penetrating the soil. There's no energy getting into that soil. 
So is it any wonder that when we treat our lands like this, that we have to add chemical fertilizers in order to grow anything at all? So if this is what your gardens look like at this time of year and you just leave it bare soil, consider sowing in a winter cover crop, even if all it's gonna do is grow for now um, and then get cut in the spring and turned into compost, you know, maybe chopped down, dropped down, or just chopped and put into compost. Um, ideally not tilled in, because we don't till, we don't wanna destroy that soil microbiology. But uh, if this is what your soils look like, consider putting in especially legumes like cowpea um, or other nitrogen fixers like vetch. Consider putting that into your soils right now because, you know, I, if I'm a bacteria living in the soil in this field, I'm dead, I'm dying. So the population will shrink and swell based on the nutrient and energy availability. Right now there's none, so the nutrient um, availability goes down, the soil life collapses in population, and then we sow into that in the spring and we wonder why we get poor germination rates and we wonder why our plants look sick when they come up. So if you want healthy starts, healthy plants all year, then you have to feed that soil microbiology. They're gonna remember, they're gonna, bacteria's gonna use the acids and they're gonna break apart um, minerals in the sand, silt, and clay, and they're gonna turn it into uh, soil aggregates using glues and the fungal mycelium network's gonna tie that all together and they're gonna make uh, all these networks of nutrient cycling, nutrient availability. So stuff like this, it's no wonder when we do this with our land, it's no wonder that we need to then add chemical fertilizers just to grow plants because we've just interrupted nature's process. So we are out of light, we're out of time, we're huddling under the truck light just so you can see me. Thanks for watching this video guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you're having a productive fall because just because your gardens are done doesn't mean you can't be very productive in collecting fertility and setting your gardens up for next year. It's that constant setting up and adding fertility that's going to really boost your gardens, your food forest, and even just your general landscaping. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful week.